Hi, Data Orchestration Guru here, and today I'm coming at you with something a little bit different. Today, what I want to talk about is really kind of for people that are maybe a little new to Airflow, maybe they're Airflow curious, and you're wondering, hey, why do I need Airflow to actually help my business? Um, you know, you might think, I have my databases, I have my ETL tools, I have my integrations, and they're all working fine. You know, I've set up these pipelines, they're using each services internal scheduler and you know it works you know maybe I have some outages maybe some things don't get passed but I can fix that and today what I'm gonna do is try to show you really why you need airflow in your business even if you have all of those tools and really especially because you might have all those tools you know people a lot of prior generations of data engineers you know they've kind of historically looked down on scheduling tools because there is kind of a bad rep with things like cron before us where in every single platform you know you have some kind of scheduling tool and it's relatively rudimentary now what airflow really brings to the table is bridging all of those different services together and acting as the interconnected tissue for your workloads so you know yes while you might be able to crib together a solution by chaining together different uh, services and doing it in kind of a very rigid and maybe time-based way with airflow you get because you have the layer on top you really get the ability to customize everything and make a workflow act exactly as you would envision it rather than staying within the confines of whatever GUI or whatever job specific scheduling tool you're using because airflow is entirely as code, you gain the full flexibility of having everything as code. You can write your own conditional statements. You can create your own logic for your pipelines. You can have scheduling that's based not just on a rigid time, but on conditions, on data sets, and also be able to plug in all of your different services into one single source of truth so that you have one place you need to go when something goes wrong to fix it instead of having to parse through the errors of going in between different services, going to different sources of logs, and having everything spread out where you're just adding additional complexity that isn't needed when you could have Airflow running at all, the show for you. So to illustrate my point here, I'm gonna kind of walk us through a use case. And what this use case is, is first I'll bring us to a graph view, because I always like this for a visual representation of my DAGs. And let's say, I'm city bikes. I'm a city bike provider. You know, I live in New York City, so I ride city bikes all the time. So that's why I kind of like choosing this for uh, my particular choice of example here. And so what you're seeing here is a pretty typical use case for a business. You know, you're pulling some data from an API, some source. You're doing some transformations on it within Databricks. Then you're maybe running it into something like Azure Data Factory to run pipelines, to do model training on that data that you're actually collecting. And then, you know, after you've done all that model training, you got to do your data quality checks. We have some SQL threshold checks here. Then finally, at the end of the day, you're moving it into a database. You're taking it all into a SQL database to actually store it and make use of it down the road. Um, and maybe that's not the end of the journey, but this is a really good example of an ingestion pipeline that, you know, while you could do everything here yourself, you know, you could set up a script that, you know, using Postman that pulls from an API and then store it on a local machine and you upload it into Databricks and you run some transformation jobs on it. And then, you know, you pass it into Azure Data Factory on a schedule, maybe every time at midnight. And then, you know, you run your SQL checks after. And if you're doing all that in isolation, you're having to log in to four different services to run your pipeline. If something doesn't arrive on time because you're relying on time-based scheduling, then the whole rest of the pipeline is broken and you're waiting for the next day for your pipeline to run unless you go in and manually intervene. Um, which, for every data engineer out there, I'm sure they know the pain of being called to come in at midnight to fix a pipeline that isn't running, and then they find out it's not running just because some data set hadn't arrived in time. Um, so what Airflow does is gives you the flexibility and the power to orchestrate all this from one source. So when something does go wrong, inevitably, you can just log into Airflow, figure out what went wrong and troubleshoot it and fix it all within the same UI. But then it also reduces the risk of that actually happening. You know, because you're not relying on rigid time-based scheduling, because everything is dynamic and loosely coupled, you know, if the data set doesn't arrive, well, that's fine. That downstream task is going to just wait until that data set arrives. It's not based on time. And so, if we walk through here piece by piece, 
we can see is, you know, hey, pulling from this API endpoint, which if we go into our mapped instances, we can see that we have this city bikes API poll that is actually five API polls at once. So it has five tasks that are mapped downstream of it. And that is what these aggregate table loads are. So even though it's just represented at one task, this is actually atomized into five different tasks. So you can pull from many different data sets. And so if we look at the code for this, we can see that all of this is happening dynamically. So it's not just a rigid API pull where I've set it in place and it's running on a schedule. Instead, I can bring in my logic where, hey, you know, I want to randomly decide which bike providers I'm going to collect from today because I want to have a good sample size and then I'm adding them to my bike providers list. So again, dynamism from the very start. Then in my API pull, I'm actually checking and dynamically creating prefixes for each of those providers. So you can see I'm adding the file name dynamically using variables. So this is actually creating new containers when I'm collecting it for each specific bike provider here. So again, we're not hard coding variables. We're actually doing everything dynamically just as you would in real life in a business. You know, if you have slowly changing definitions, you have files that aren't always going to be the same. And so if you wanna plan for that, you gotta use Airflow. You gotta make sure you have the ability to customize with Python the, your tasks so that they can accept non-standard inputs. They can change as your data changes. Then, if we go down here to our Databricks submit run asynchronous operator, this is actually waiting for any of these connection, these files to be created. So instead of it being a you know, strictly time-based scheduling solution, we're actually just waiting for these files to arrive. So this means you as a business is you don't have to rely on saying, hey, I want to batch process every time at midnight. And you know, if the files arrive earlier, that's fine. They're just going to sit there. Now you can have a process where whenever a file shows up, it's processed immediately. But when there's no files coming through, there's no data pipeline running, there's no compute power being used. So you still gain the same efficiencies as batch processing, but you're not stuck to a rigid schedule. You actually decrease the time for your data to get to its end destination because it's running just as it's ready, just in time. So it's taking that just in time manufacturing ethos and bringing it into data pipelines. So with an asynchronous operator, what this is doing is just pulling those, da those data points that we just created with the Azure blob and waiting for some files to arrive from those API sources and then running those Databricks pipe submit run, run pipelines. Then we have our Azure Data Factory pipeline. Again, asynchronously running when those data sets arrive and are ready to be operated on. So you can see you know, all our standard variables here, but the key one is checked interval. This is what's going to be actually checking that Databricks run to make sure that it's variable that it's consuming are ready. Next, we have is those mini boxes for each data pipeline, the actual processing that we're doing. So here we have our Postgres, which is actually querying SQL, doing some transformations on that data face and pulling the providers out. Then we have the provider check, which is a short circuit operator to make sure that the PL owner exists in this dynamic provider so that it is actually a valid provider source. We have our test aggregate, which is inserting the aggregate columns, doing some data set transformations. And then finally, you have our SQL threshold check operator, which is checking for any irregularities and then loading that table into our SQL database. And so you'll notice that we didn't actually have 16 different tasks here. What we have is just, we define that one pipeline and then for each provider, if we look in here, we're passing a list of all those account IDs for each provider into this city, this city bikes DAG. So what you're then looking at is a dynamically Python-esque function definition where by adding this dot expand to a Python DAG, it actually expands it so that for each of those providers that's passed in there, which you can see by the four task, task for task and owner insert group, which is the grouping of tasks that we're processing here for each owner, which you saw in the, da in the DAG graph before, to run through those four tasks, complete all their data price pipelines, in isolation. So they're working in parallel rather than sequentially. So even though you're processing four different data sets at once, you're actually able to process them at the speed of one data set because they're working in parallel. And that is another great advantage of Airflow. So with most of these tools, you know, they're single threaded. They're not able to work in parallel because they're just not designed to. They're designed to process a data pipeline. And 
with airflow, because you have the concept of workers, you have parallelism baked into how airflow functions, you can save time on your bulkiest loads because you can run them all at the same time without waiting for each one to finish and then waiting for a downstream task. So again, another huge benefit of airflow is decreasing your actual data processing time and your pipeline time when you're running a lot of the same operation, just changing you know once variable or what data set it's operating on. Um, and so what that all leads to is, again, circling back to our graph view here, looking at this pipeline, you, know, you can see how we've taken all of these different systems and you know, that are working in isolation and doing really well at what they're supposed to do. So Databricks is really good at transforming. Da Azure Data Factor is really good at training ML models. SQL check, check operator is really good at checking SQL, obviously. And Airflow isn't trying to do any of those things. It's just trying to help all those things do what they're best at and reducing the rigidity and giving them an easier way to communicate between each other. So you know you ha have things like dynamic creation, you have things like working in parallel, and you get all these efficiencies of running your pipelines at enterprise scale without really needing to do a whole ton of enterprise level data engineering. So I really hope you learned something. I hope you understood and you know can see how Airflow can be helpful for really any business, you know, whether it's Oracle or it's the tiniest little startup. Everyone has room for Airflow because data drives business these days. And so with that, I hope you learned something. If you did, would love if you liked and subscribed and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.